Okay, share a screen. This is chapter five. Can you see that? Yeah, it's still loading. Yeah, okay. it's up now. Okay. I think uh I think we're gonna oh. read uh I'll read the Sanskrit and uh a translation and then you can read the we'll take turns with the purports and stuff, you know. That's fine. Okay. Just like we, we did before. Except for last week, because I didn't want to read. It, there was hardly any purports. But this is like Narada Muni is in meeting Vyasadev, or uh, Vyasadev, his guru is Narada Muni, the transcendental spaceman. You know, he can go anywhere in the world, in the universe. Talk about like UFOs. He can go anywhere in the universe in no time flat. He can go all the way to the spiritual world. And, uh, you know, he visited all of Krishna's palaces to see what was going on in there because he was very curious. And uh, he saw Krishna engage in different activities. You know, he was playing with his wife one time. He was like playing with his kids. He was doing his morning ablutions. And actually, there were different times within each palace. And he, he was doing something different in every single palace. And so he was blown away, even though he's, you know, the son of Lord Brahma. So he's like really old, you know, he's like 150 trillion years old. But uh, and he, you know, he, his father was the guy that created the universe. But still, he was blown away by Krishna's mystic power, that how he was able to have all these queens in different palaces and have, do different stuff with all of them. And each of them was thinking that he's my I am his favorite wife because he's always spending so much time with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Narada's instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vyasadev, text one, Sutta Uvacha, Atatam Sukha Masina, Upasinam Brachara, Devarshi Praha Viparshim Vina Pani Svayani Va. Sutta, Sutta, Uvacha said, Ata, therefore, Tum, him, Sukha Masina, comfortably situated, Upasinam. One, unto one sitting nearby, Brihat Shriva, greatly respected, Devarshi, the great Rishi among the gods, Praha said, Viprashim um, unto the Rishi among the Brahmanas, Vinapani, who, who carry, one who carries a Vina in his hand, Smayaneva, apparently smiling. Translation. Sutta Goswami said, thus the sage among the gods, Narda. See, this is in the, in the forest. They're, they're recounting what happened on the bank of the Ganges when Maharaj Prakshit was being instructed by Shukadev Goswami. Narada Muni was also there. There was all kinds of saints and sages from all over the universe, but he was there. Um, <clears throat> or wait. No, Narada Muni had come to, this isn't by the bank of the Ganges. This is in uh, Veda Biasa's crib. He has a place and Narada, you know, knew that he was having some difficulty with the, the conclusions that he'd written about, uh, you know, all the Vedas. And so he was not feeling satisfied. And so he went to visit him because he knows what his disciple is thinking, you know. The, the very powerful personalities can tell what you're thinking, you know, if you're like intimately connected with them. Sutta Goswami said, thus the sage among the gods, Narada, comfortably seated and apparently smiling, redressed the rishi amongst the brahmanas. Vidbyas, go ahead. The purpuri, the Narada, was smiling because he well knew that the great sage Vyasadeva in the cause of his disappointment as he will explain gradually, Vyasa Dave, disappointment was due to insufficiency in present in presenting the science of devotional service. Narda knew the defect, and it was confirmed by the position of Vyasa. Text two Narda Vacha Parasharya Mahabhaga Bhavata Kitchidatvana Parityusyati Sharira. Atma Manasaevava. Synonyms. Narda. Narda Uvacha said, 
Parasharya. O son of Parashara, Mahabhaga, O the greatly fortunate Bhavata, your Kashit, it, if it is Atmana, by the self realization of Parit Tu Syati, does it satisfy Shadira, identifying with the body, Atma, self, Manasha, identifying the mind, Eva, certainly, Va, and. Translation Addressing Vyasadev, the son of Parashara, Narada inquired, are you satisfied by identifying with the body or the mind as objects of self-realization? Go ahead. Corporate. This was a hint by Norda to Vyasadeva regarding the cause of his despondency. Vyasadeva, as the descendant of Parasha, a greatly powerful sage, had the privilege of having a great percent pirateage which should now have given Vyasa Dave cause for despondency despondency being a great son of the great father he should not have identified the self with the body or the mind ordinary men with a poor fund of knowledge can identify the body as self or the mind as self but Vyasa Dave should not have done so so one cannot be cheerful by nature unless one is factually seated in self-realization, which is transcendental to the material body and the mind. Yeah, we're not the body, we're not the mind. <clears throat> That's why Bhakti Siddhanta said, O ye wicked mind, thou art not a Vaishnava. In other words, the mind is not a devotee, and it's always taking us here and there, you know, and leading us on a wild goose chase down the the primrose path to hell, you know, because <laughs> it, it it if it's not controlled, then it could be your worst enemy. I think William Blake said that the mind is a thing in itself, and and can make a friend, and and it it's uh, it can be the greatest enemy, and it could also be the greatest friend, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Also association, like you were writing about all the, you know, the bad work environments and stuff. Association is really important too, because we're we're social animals. And so we we kind of like uh absorb whatever environment we're in. So if we're in a demonic environment, if we we become demonic, if we if we're in a, a like a mode of goodness place like a forest, then we become you know, more enlightened, more mode of goodness, you know, we can think higher thoughts and be peaceful. And if we're in a temple, we think of Krishna. So it depends on where we are and who we're associating with. And it can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven, the mind, you know, just depending on what we associate with, what we think of, and who we listen to, you know. Jijnasitam sushtam panam at Apite Mahada Adbutam, Kritavan Bharatam Yaspam, Sarvharta Paribrimhitam. Synonyms. Jijnasitam. Fully inquired. Susampanam, well versed, api, in spite of. Te, your Mahat Adbutam, great and wonderful. Kritavan, prepared Bharatam, the Mahabharat. Tam tam yatvam, you what you have done, sarva artas, including all sequences, pari brimitam, elaborately explained. I mean, the Mahabharat contains the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, Vyasadeva was the spiritual master of uh, Sanjaya, who narrated the Bhagavad Gita to the king of the of the Kurus, he could envision all of that stuff going on in the battlefield. But we need we can, we don't have a we don't have a spiritual master like Veda Vyasa, so we have to rely on YouTube and you know to communicate all these things and live television and stuff. We don't have the ability or the um, you know Vyasa Dave is a mystic. He could transmit by his grace. He could transmit. What was going on? What was being said between Arjuna and 
and Krishna to his disciple who was narrating the sequence of events on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. I, you know, people think that people were primitive, you know, like the scientists or the archaeologists, they think that people were really primitive back then. They, they were not primitive. They were so smart. And they had weapons that would make Star Wars look like romper room. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if you, that's a pretty old reference. You probably don't know what romper room is. No. That's like a 70s show for kids. You know, like, uh, like, um, anyway, you know, it's like a kid's show where all the kids sit on bleachers and stuff and then they watch cartoons and play games. Wow. Yeah, but it was a 1970s show, so you weren't even born that at that point. <laughs> your inquiries were full and your studies were also well fulfilled. And there is no doubt that you've prepared a great and wonderful work, the Mahabharata which contains the Gita, which is full of all kinds of Vedic sequences elaborately explained. I mean, Mahabharata is pretty much the story of India. Bharat was, is the name of India, and Maha means the great. They're the great story of India, and it contains all of the pastimes and all of the activities that went on during that period. And it was especially meant for, um, like, you know, not, not really highly philosophical people, it was meant, you know, for reading, like the women would like to read it because it had like all kinds of romance and fighting and, you know, different types of, uh, you know, uh, drama and stuff like that. And it was just interesting, you know, people like to read. And plus, it was all about Krishna and the Pandavas and his devotees. So it was a way of injecting that knowledge. And the Bhagavad Gita is right in there. So it was a way to inject the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita into these wonderful pastimes of all this drama that was going on. And, and it was real too. It was, it's like made up, you know, this was a real war. 600 million soldiers died in that war. So Vyasadeva wrote everything. He wrote the Mahabharata, he wrote the Puranas, he wrote, he wrote the Upanishads, he wrote the, uh, the Vedas, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Atarva Veda, and uh, Jagar Veda. I mean, this like an, if you go to any college library, you'll see like an entire row of books and it's, they're all written by Vyasadeva and he was just one dude. But, you know, Ganesh, you know, that shirt that you have, that yeah. sweatshirt, he broke off his tusk and helped him to write it down. He was using that as a pen, his tusk. Did you know that? Yeah, that's, that was a long time. That's beyond our time. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I know I, I, you probably weren't there, but I'm just no. saying that's what happened. You know, Vyasadeva, uh, Ganesh was the son of Lord Shiva. He, he wanted to help Vyasadeva in his service. And so he he was like acting as a scribe. Yeah, 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 yeah like a scribe. So uh, you you can read the, uh, yeah. you read the purport. The purport is the, the sp despondency. Vyasadeva was certainly not due to his lack of sufficient knowledge, because as a student, he had fully inquired about the Vedic literatures, as a result of which the Mahabharata is compiled with full explanations of the Vedas. Yeah. Text four. Jignasitam adhitam cha brahma yat tat sanatanam tatapi so chas yatmanam Akritarta eva prabho, jignasitam, well, deliberately, full, deliberated fully well, aditam, the knowledge obtained, cha and brahma, the absolute yet what tat that, sanatanam, eternal, tatapi, in spite of that, so chasi, lamenting, atmanam, unto the self, akritarta, undone, eva, like prabho, my dear sir. Translation, you. I've fully delineated the subject of impersonal Brahman as well as the knowledge derived therefrom. Why should you be despondent in spite of all this thing that you are done undone, my dear Prabhu? The purport, the Vedanta Sutra, the Brahma Sutra, compiled by Sri Vyasadeva is full of deliberation of the impersonal absolute feature, and it is accepted as the most exalted 
philosophical exposition in the world. It covers the subject of eternity and the methods are scholarly. So there cannot be any doubt about the transcendental scholarship of Vyasa Dave. So why should he lament? lament? Yeah. I mean, Vyasa Dave was, I mean, he was actually an incarnation of Vishnu, a literary incarnation. He wrote all the Ved Vedas. You have to be empowered to, you have to be like God to do that, you know. Wasn't it in the Ryan? He was an expansion. He was a he was an uh, an incarnation of Vishnu. Yeah, Actually, he's still alive somewhere in the Himalayas. He lives there. Next five. As Vyasa Vacha Asteva me sarvamidam chak tvayoktam tatapi natma padis. You two siete me tan mulam avyaktam agadabodam prachatma he tvatma bavatma butam trans synonyms vyas vyas vacha said asti there is eva certainly me mine sarvam all idam this tvaya by you uktam uttered tatapi and yet not not atma self parit does pacify me unto me that of which mulam root of yaktam undetected at gadabodam the man of unlimited knowledge preach hamahe do inquire tva unto you atma bhava self self born atma bhutam offspring translation Sri Vyasadev said all you have said about me is perfectly correct despite all this I'm not pacified. I therefore question you about the root of my dis cause of my dissatisfaction. For you are a man of unlimited knowledge due to your being the offspring of one Brahma who is self born without a mundane father and mother. Go ahead. The poor part is in the material world, everyone is engrossed with the idea of identifying the body or the mind with the self. As much as such how the knowledge disseminated in the material world is related either with the body or with the mind, and that is the root cause of all despondencies. This is not always detected. Even though one may be the greatest erudite scholar in materialistic knowledge, it is good, therefore, to approach a personality like Narada to solve the root cause of all despondencies. Why Narada should be approached is explained below. Text 6. Savai bhavan veda samastaguyam upasito yat purusha purana parashvaresho manashaiva vishvam Shrijatiyavatiyati gunara sangha, <clears throat> synonyms, sa, thus, vai, certainly, bhavan, yourself, veda, no, samashta, all-inclusive, buyam, confidential, upashita, devotee of, yat, because, purusha, the personality of God, it, purana, the oldest, para avara isha, the controller of the material and spiritual worlds, manasa, mind, eva, only, Vishvam, the universe, Vishrijati creates, Avatiyati, annihilates, Gunai, by the qualitative matter, Asanga, unattached, translation. O Lord, everything that is mysterious is known to you because you worship the creator and destroyer of the material world and the maintainer of the spiritual world, the original personality of Godhead, who is transcendental to the three modes of material nature. The poor port is a person who is sent for sent, engaged in the service of the Lord as the emblem of all knowledge. Such a devotee of the Lord is full perfection of devotional service, is also perfected by the qualification of the personality of Godhead. As such, the eightfold perfection of mystic powers, Asata City, constitute very little of his godly op opulence. A devotee like Narda can act wonderfully by the by his spiritual perfection, which every individual is trying to attain. Shrila Narda is the is a sent 
percent perfect living entity, although not equal to the personality of Godhead. So cent percent means like one hundred percent. Yeah. Text seven. From Paryatan Arkaiva Trilokin Antas Sharyo Ivor Evatma Shakshi Paravare Brahmani Dharmato Vratai Snatasya Me Nunam Alam Bichakshva Synonyms Thumb, your goodness, Paryatam, traveling, Arka, the sun, Eva, like Trilokim, the three worlds, Antachara, can penetrate into everyone's heart. Vayuiva, as good as the all-pervading air. Atma, self-realized, shakshi, witness. Para avare, in the matter of cause and effect. Brahmani, in the absolute. Dharmata, under disciplinary regulations. Vritai, the vow. Snatasya, having been absorbed in me, mine. Nyunam, deficiency. Alam, clearly. Vichakshva. Search out. Translation, like the sun, your goodness can travel everywhere in the three worlds. And like the air, you can penetrate the internal region of everyone. As such, you are as good as the all pervasive super soul. Therefore, please find out the deficiency in me, despite my being absorbed in transcendence under disciplinary regulations and vows. Go ahead. The purport is the transcendental realization, the pious activities, worshiping the deities, charity, mercifulness, nonviolence, and studying the scriptures under strict disciplinary regulations are always helpful. Wow. That really is true. Yeah. Well, that charity, mercifulness, nonviolence, and those are the three things that, that are lacking in Kali Yuga. Charity, mercifulness, nonviolence, you know, that's, that, that's why the Buddha came to stop the animal killing, because you can't really understand Krishna unless you're nonviolent and merciful to other living entities. It, it's not possible because you're just callous, you know, you don't care what goes on with, with anybody else except yourself, you know. So that's, uh, you know, and studying the scriptures gives uh, you a different perspective on things. It can point you toward the right direction, the absolute truth. And worshiping the deity, the deity is not indifferent from Krishna. Pious activities, you know, like digging wells, planting trees and stuff like that, you know, helping out, you know, feeding the poor or whatever. You know, those are also pious activities and they can lead you to the mode of goodness. And from the mode of goodness, you can actually enter into transcendence if you get the right association. Of course, the mode of goodness in and of itself is not uh, transcendental, but transcendental realization starts from the platform of the mode of goodness. That's why, uh, you know, the Vedas try to bring you up gradually, step by step up through these different modes of material nature, because... Any any mode of nature is not the goal. You know, we have to try. That's why Krishna told Arjuna, he said, rise above these modes of Arjuna, be transcendental to all of them. Narda, Sri Narda Vacha. Bhava Tanudita Prayan Yaso Bhagavato Malam Yena Yenaiva Shod Natusyeta Manyeta Darsham Darshanam Kilam, synonyms. Sri Narda, Sri Narda Uvacha said, Bhavata, by you, Anudita Prayam, almost not praised, Yasha glories, Bhagavata, of the personality of God at Amalam, spotless, Yena, by which Eva certainly, Asho, he, the personality of God at not, does not, Tushyeta, be pleased, Mani, I think, taught that Darshanam philosophy, Kilam, Inferior translation. Sri Narada said, now this is a good verse. I mean, he's telling him the, the root of his problem now. Why he's so dissatisfied. Translation. Sri Narada said, you have actually not broadcast the sublime and spotless glories of the personality of Godhead. That philosophy, which does not satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord, is considered worthless. 
I mean, that, Bhak, Prabhupada says the same thing in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. He says, we are not contaminating the message of Bhagavad Gita. The message of Bhagavad Gita is this. Instead of satisfying your own senses, try to satisfy Krishna's senses. And because we're not water, watering down that message that the goal of life is to satisfy Krishna's senses, that, you know, th this is the bona fide Bhagavad Gita. You know, we're not like putting any spin on it or making our own interpretation. This is actually the pure form of the Bhagavad Gita because we have to dovetail all our activities to satisfy the Supreme Lord. That's the goal of life. Prema Pamarta Maham, you know, the goal of life is Prema and uh, Hari Toshanam means to satisfy the Supreme Lord Hari. Hari means, you know, Krishna. And so when we satisfy Krishna, what's what more is there left to be done? That is the goal. Uh, because then he'll be with you and then he'll he'll be happy. Um uh, so go ahead. Yeah. You can read <clears throat> the, the whole purport. Purport. Yeah. Yeah. The purport is the eternal relation of an individual so with the supreme personality of Godhead is constitutionally one being the eternal servitor of the eternal master. The Lord has expanded himself as living beings in order to accept loving service from them, and this alone can satisfy both the Lord and the living entities. Such a scholar as Vyasadeva has completed, completed many expansions of the Vedic literatures, ending with the Vedanta philosophy. But none of them have been written directly glorifying the personality of Godhead. Dry philosophical speculations, even on the transcendental subject of the absolute, have very little attraction without directly dealing with the glorification of the Lord. The personality of Godhead is the last word in transcendental realization. The Absolute realizes in personal Brahman or localized super school, the Paramatma is less productive on transcendental bliss than the supreme personal realization of his glories. The compiler of the Vedanta Darshana is Vyasadeva himself. Getty is troubled, although he is the author. So what sort of transcendental bliss can be derived from the readers and listeners of Vedanta, which is not explained directly by Vyasadeva, the author? Herein arises the necessity of explaining Vedanta Sutra in the form of the Shramad Bhagavatam by the Sayyaf, same author. Yeah, it's, there's three aspects of, of the absolute truth, and that's Sat, Chit, Ananda, eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Ananda means bliss. So you don't, from super soul realization or the Paramatma realization, which is the Lord in the heart, and from, it's a, just a localized aspect of the Supreme and the Brahman realization, which is the all-pervading super soul or the all-pervading Brahman, uh, like the sunlight, you know, Paramatma is like the sun God, uh, the sun disk, and then Bhagavan is like the sun God inside the sun, you know, so you can't really have bliss from an impersonal relationship or an impersonal realization. You have to be in contact with somebody. You know, if you're just like by yourself, you're not having any fun, you know, you have to, you want to go out and, uh, you know, be with somebody, you know. So therefore, uh, the only kind of satisfaction we can, the only blissful form is, uh, you know, having a relationship with Krishna and then we can be unlimitedly blissful because Krishna is, is you know, he is always happy. Have you ever seen Krishna like behind the house smoking a cigarette or something? No. <laughs> well, you know, he's always happy. He's always playing with his boyfriends, his girlfriends and the cows. And he he's always happy. And that's the nature of the absolute truth. And we can also share in that happiness and communicate with that blissful personality and become unlimited, unlimitedly blissful ourselves. That's what it means, what Lord Chaitanya says in his Shikshasika prayers. Anandam Bodhivardam. Anandam means bliss, just like it says there, uh, transcendental bliss. And Ananda Bodhivardam means the ocean. So it's an ever expanding ocean of transcendental bliss. And um, 
the devotees are the only ones that can have access to that because there is no ever expanding transcendental happiness in the material world because everything's temporary and miserable it's there's no fun at all i mean it might have some a little bit of of uh temporary happiness but that's only in relation to the body and mind doesn't have anything to do with really quenching your true happiness which has to do with quenching the soul's yearning which means to go back to our root to where uh you know our home is in the spiritual world so we can play with krishna forever that's happiness otherwise we'll never be happy we're you know like saint augustine said you know our hearts are restless till they rest in thee so we need to uh realize that instead of trying to eke out some kind of pleasure out of this material world you know yeah the the material world is full of miserable misery and krishna certifies it it's dukaliam ashashatam dukaliam means temper or miserable and ashashatam means temporary and so you know at Prahlad Maharaj too he said you know people are madly trying to uh, rush around and try to chew uh, and get some juice out of that which has already been chewed just like say if you if you were walking down a McKeesport and you saw a big glob of tobacco that somebody chewed and spit out if you if you pick that up and start chewing on it probably mostly uh tasteless because you know somebody already chewed it plus it's gross so yeah. um, but uh that's what it is in the material world trying to get happiness out of the body and mind it's not possible there's no permanent happiness it's just maybe like like even the highest platform of of happiness in the material world is sex but that only lasts for a couple seconds and then after that uh you know there's all kinds of entanglements and everything so uh yamunacharya he was a big king and he thought he was like really uh he had all the experience of with women being a king and everything he had probably a harem just like a lot of kings do and so he knew everything about sex but once he said once i've tasted the transcendental pastimes of between radha and krishna every time i think of sex with a woman i turn my face my lips curl in distaste and i spit at the thought that's a natural occurrence for a devotee because it's not it, it doesn't have any taste it's just the same old thing you know Prabhupada called it like an itch he said you know if you just have to tolerate the itch even though you might be attracted sexually you just have to tolerate the itch and then it'll pass you know if you're engaged in Krishna consciousness and preaching Krishna consciousness and satisfying the senses of Krishna instead of your own senses then you'll be able to get steady and 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 make steady progress along the path and become more and more purified so we don't think about these lower tastes anymore you got to have a higher taste though in order to get the higher taste you have to first perform some sadhana by reading like we're doing here and by chanting and by associating with the devotees i just want to commend you you know like i was just reading one of the uh, chapters in the last chapter that i wrote you know it's like he was describing about the people in this age you know it used to be you know like the most people in this age will go to their church like once a week if that and they most people don't even do that mm -hmm. and so people are lazy but you know one of your good qualities is you're not lazy you come every single week to our two guys bhagavatam reading <laughs> yeah so I appreciate that and I, I i commend you for doing that and i uh, hope you can keep it up anyway uh we've got two minutes remaining do you want any do you have any questions yeah. about this yeah i go to paramatma because i was really thinking about the krishna story with book from the book and about the shiva coming in the fire when that demon tried to kill himself and and you mentioned to me about that because we have all these little green guys and these ufos everywhere and the shoras they come here but then you mentioned the demigods and and krishna do not because of the way how miserable is so is this where basically the what the paramatma is is if you 
things were different when, with that demon. So in this age, if you stick your hand in the fire, you know, Shiva's, you mentioned Shiva's not, your hand's going to catch on fire. If you jump off a bridge, you're going to, you're going to die. Is that kind of where you're saying the demigods are not going to come here and do the same the thing as what they're not coming here because there's nothing to do here. I mean, they used to have huge sacrifices with, with offerings, sacrificial offerings to all the demigods. They don't yeah. do that anymore. There's nobody qualified to make these huge sacrifices. They're very expensive. Wow. And, uh, plus, nobody's qualified to do it. And so why should the demigods come here? It's like a fourth place. You know, it's like, why Why would you want to go to Somalia or someplace like that? They don't even have a government, you know. So. No. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you for attending. And we're almost out of time, less than a minute here. But thank you very much for coming every week. And I appreciate it. There is a program tomorrow at the same time, same place at the uh, Kirtan Center. So I'll think about the Prashadam too. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.